Hey everybody, Jem Schofield of the C47 and another episode of Gearbox 2.0. In this episode, we're going to take a trip over to Italy, as they say on the East Coast where I grew up, and take a look at these three lights from Lupo. They're LED Fresnels, so let's get started. All right, kids. Today we're going to take a look at three lights, a 650, a 1K, and a 2K from an Italian company called Lupo. Clean, understated, uh, incredibly lightweight. This is the 1K here, and it weighs, well, not a lot, and that is the beauty of LED technology. And I don't get a lot of LEDs that come across my plate nowadays. In fact, one of my one of my wishes is that we continue to see this trend moving forward where we get lensed LEDs. Now it doesn't mean that there haven't been Fresnel based LEDs for a long time. Um, but I haven't really taken a look at any in a long time. And the first thing that I wanted to make sure that the lights were when I did look at them, was bicolor. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I could change color temperature. For me, the advantage is, even though these lights do come in single color temperatures for a little bit less money, um, the advantages of bicolor, being able to go from 3200 to 5600 Kelvin, is just huge for me in terms of what I'm doing in my production. So I don't really look at lights very much anymore that are single color temperature. There are some exceptions in terms of their modifiers and how they work, but for the most part, I'm looking for bicolor. Uh, so there are some similarities and differences between the three lights that you see here. So I'm gonna kinda go through some of the specs. I'm sure I'll get these out into the real world and do some other stuff with them in the near future, but we have this 650 version, which has a 60 watt draw. We have the 1K, which is a 110 watt draw. And then over here, the big Kahuna, the 2K version, which is what they're calling it, which has a 220 watt draw in terms of the light. They are, as I said before, capable of going between 3200 and 5600 Kelvin. And just taking a look at the back of the unit here, Really, they are simple and understated. There is a power switch, four pin XLR connector for powering solutions by battery, uh, DMX in and out, and then there is a flood, uh, flood spot knob. I don't know what a flood is, but a flood spot knob. Handle here to carry the unit. We've got a yoke here. Um, all of the units come with barn doors, and thankfully the barn doors are appropriately weighted to the size of the fixture and the fact that they are LEDs and lightweight. I remember on more than one occasion getting barn doors for one by one fixtures by certain manufacturers and they were heavier than the actual uh, fixtures themselves. So I like the fact that that's the case. Uh, this little knob here for the release on all three of them is a little fiddly, but overall build quality is very good. I like the way these lights feel. They look like they can take a little bit of a beating. And uh, it is a composite material here. It's not all metal construction, but it does seem to be well made. Now, uh, control wise, it's pretty simple. There's a control unit right here on the side of all three of the lights with three buttons, which control how you get through everything. And the only thing that I don't like on the 650 and the 2K is in the down position here, it actually covers the first button. And you may have noticed uh, that my light level changed. And that's because I'm just taking this 650 here and I'm actually bouncing it into a, about a two by three piece of diffusion there to light this episode. Hey, why not? Uh, camera set to 5600 Kelvin. These lights will initially be at 5600 Kelvin. Let me go ahead and strike the 1K light. This is incredibly quiet, basically silent. Um, this has a fan in it, 
I can't really hear it. I would have no issue using this um, in a production and having it close by to talent. Can you guys see? No. So now I have to move something. See, that's the way it works here. We're doing real stuff. Here's the control. I don't expect you guys to see everything, but one, two, three. Um, if I press this third button here, it basically toggles between different modes on here, dimmer, and then I can just use one and two to dim the light down, to dim the light up, and then I hit it again, and I'm switching over to color temperature. So let me swing that over here, and I'm just going down here now to tungsten, so you guys can see that. Uh, flood spot here is 18 on the spot, 250 on all three of the fixtures. And this 1K is nice and bright. Um, I really like this light a lot. I think that the 1K for me is kind of like the sweet spot. Again, DMX, there is a strobe feature in here that you can go into. Actually, let me see if I can actually activate it. Hold this down here. Brings you into another menu, manual options, device settings. Let me just see here if I can get in here. I'll enter there. And here we go, effects, strobe, select, on, and there you go. All right, so you can see there's a strobe effect here, and I can change the frequency if I want, so you guys get the basic idea. Um, <laughs> I'm wreaking havoc here because of the way the light is set here um, in terms of my frequency and my hertz, uh, because it's not gonna give you basically a match with the way I'm shooting this video, which is why you're seeing those lines, but easy enough to fix. Um, these are flicker free for high frame rates. And then there's the 2K version right here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And I'm just gonna strike that light. Now the fan on this one is definitely the loudest of the three. Um, directly next to talent, I'd be a little concerned with this, but um, aside from that, I wouldn't have a problem with it being used. And generally for a 2K, I'm gonna probably have that a little bit further away from talent anyway. Um, really, really, really nice fall off on these lights. That's the one thing for me that I've been noticing. They're very even, and that is not always the case with uh, lensed Fresnel-based LED lights. So I'm really happy with the, the fall off from that lens that they have inside of here. Uh, barn doors are also nice. You're cutting LEDs, they're chip on board, so you are going to, as you close those doors down really tightly, possibly see a few little lines there because you're not emitting from a completely single source. Uh, but chip on board has gotten pretty good, and I would say that for the price point that we have here, which is between for the dual color ones, which I'm looking at, and I would recommend about $1,200 to just under $2,000 US, you're getting a lot of output, a really beautiful light. Um, the light looks very consistent. Uh, these two are sort of bang on in terms of 5,600 Kelvin. This one was reading just a little bit cooler. Um, again, nothing that I would see as a problem. And because you can change the color temperature, it's really easy to get these to match each other. I'd love to see a plus minus green option on here. Um, I hear a lot of noise happening. That's probably my 10 year old running past the barn right now. So I'm gonna wrap this thing up. Lupo LED Fresnel lights, 650, 1K, 2K. The 1K for me is the winner. That's the sweet spot, silent. Uh, great color, nice fall off. I like that 18 to 50 degree spot to flood. And I think you guys should check it out. I'll put the links below the fold to the distributor here in the US. I'll also put links to B&H and also to the company website so you can check out the Italy part of the whole thing. And I'll see you guys next time on Gearbox.